What's up, guys? Just checking that everything's working. Oh, there's a bit of a time lag there, man. Ah, <sighs> oh, we're on. Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Okay, audio is good. Oh, it's so hot, man. What's up, guys, gals, viewers, old and new? How's everybody doing, man? Hoping to catch Sarge in here, man. Where's Dutchie? <laughs> I'll have to put my phone here. Oh. I'm a little bit tired. I always get like this when I start on you, on my artwork. Get a little bit dizzy. I've had coffee. Coffee's just the best thing in the world. Right, where am I? We're using the threes on the Copics. Is that a good camera angle for you guys? I don't know. Right, where are we going to start today? Just checking how this is looking. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what's going on. Do -do 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 -do. Very handy things are these stencils, man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try some different stuff on this piece, but I always get trapped into doing stuff that uh 
I'm used to. Oh, God damn. So I want to get this piece done. Unfortunately, I don't know why this happens. You know, I try to keep this paper as, as white as possible, but for some reason, um, it like goes stained. I don't know why it, why it does that. It just goes yellow. And because of like the um, crazy fucking humidity in, in this house or in Japan in general, my main pieces that are framed in the hallway, um, paper's starting to warp out, which is really fucking annoying. Which can't be helped. It's not too bad, but fighting with humidity in Japan is a big fucking problem. So I hope it once the weather cools off a bit and the humidity drops, I hope the um, the paper kind of relaxes down, man. It's more better. I'm working on like these like really weird pods that sit on these clouds. And already these <laughs> these micro pens are already like dying out because if you leave them a long time, the pens lose their opacity. But that sometimes can be a a good thing, though. You know what I mean? So I'm like working on like these flower patterns around the 
the fairy's head, this girl's head. But as you know, like with my worker, I always think very carefully on what I'm going to draw. So it's like very organic. Nothing's planned out. My eyes, unfortunately, are not how they used to be. Oh, it's going to take a long time for me to do this one.
pen situation is a bit crazy. I want to see if I have a new... Zero point three. Ah, I'm sure, I have somewhere. Zero three zero four one. Mm -hmm. Add it. Oh, hello to the one viewer. What's up, Mark? How you doing, man? Yeah. You want to... I haven't shown this for quite some time, so... Ooh. How you doing, Mark? So, oh, shit. We're losing all our shit here. I have the worst setup, man, because uh, I've got my work PC. You generally get the gist of what's going on. Doing great, cool drawing. Cheers, brother. I, I can't... Are you... Sorry, man. Like, I'm really bad with people's names and... Um, um, people that I've met or people that are subscribed to me that I don't know, I've never talked to. So I don't know how you know me, man. <laughs> Just type in the chat, bro. I have the worst memory ever, man. And I'm really bad with names. Like, really bad. Maybe you can blame that on um, on old age. Where are you from, man? Because I have a Mark that watches my YouTube videos quite a lot. And he's from England. So I don't know if it's you mark apologies if i get you if i get mistaken man or it might be someone from twitter because i've just started to use twitter or should i say x or what it's fucking called so I'm trying to get some new subscribers and new people into my community. So I don't know if you're from Twitter or not, man, but uh, I ran across you on Facebook, joined a couple of chats there. I mean, I mean, Texas, good old Texas, man. Okay, Mark, thanks for watching, bro. What time is it in Texas, man? Uh, because, like, <clears throat> the best time that um, I stream, uh, I always try and catch my uh, American friends. Because, obviously, I'm in, um, in Japan. Um, I think my morning is your evening or afternoon. <clears throat> Eight PM. Okay, man. So, how's life in Texas, man? Give me a background. I can't. You might. You might be like a, a scale modeler. I don't know. I don't know how we met, but I have a lot of friends on Facebook from different kind of like um, I would say hobbies and genres and stuff. So, you know what Facebook's like. You know, you add people or people add you and that. I have, I think I have like maybe 3,000 people. And I don't, honestly, I don't even speak to half. You know what I mean? So it's, um, hard to keep up with everybody. Ah, uh, you do modeling in some art. Oh, awesome, man. What kind of art do you do, bro? <clears throat> and what scale model genre? Yeah, FB's a mixed bag. It most certainly is, man. 
Uh, as you know, I'm TMD, aka Tokyo Model Detective. And uh, what kind of scale models do you do, bro? So as you may have seen, if you're a follower of me on um, on my YouTube channel, um, I've made a bit of a, a comeback. Selling-wise, I did post in my group, and I did make some information about me selling some of my old um, stash off. Um, <clears throat> but I've just recently discovered um, train modeling. <clears throat> So my throat's a bit fucked at the moment. Um, so uh, I made a video about an old model shop, train model shop specifically, in the next city of where I live, which is only like 10 minutes away. And lo and behold, the actual sister shop is actually in my town, which was the first shop that, which is the first shop that I ever went to or bought um, scale modeling equipment like airbrush paints and stuff, which is kind of crazy. So I didn't know that this, I didn't know that this other shop actually was like the second shop. And it kind of inspired me now to um do a YouTube series on like these old modeling shops that are still around in Japan that are like fucking really old, but shops that like hardcore loyal fans go to, right? Um, because in Japan, it's really uh, obviously like you know, like Americans are like really envious of like people that live in Japan because of like all the modeling equipment and kits that we get out here. Um, Sadly, Mark, uh, like the big corporations, the big chains um, in Japan have basically decimated the market because obviously um, their prices are a lot cheaper. Um, there's more stock. So it's quite sad to see like these really old retro Japanese modeling shops like closed down. Um, some are still around and they have like their hardcore base from like people that were shopping there probably back in the 70s, 80s. Let me get back into your chat. Loves me some spaceships and robot, Roboto. Got a resin kit off the... Oh, Prometheus. Whoa. So... Oh, bro, man. Dude, I'm a big Aliens fan, man. I'm a big Aliens fan. Have you got like the Sadako by any chance? Because I know like there's a, a lot of people doing um, 3D prints of the Sadako and other stuff from uh, the Aliens franchise. Um, I'm talking like one meter stuff. <laughs> I do digital art mostly these days, but used to do large acrylic paintings, concept art for NASA. No way, bro. Murals for business. Bro, you're going to have to DM me your. Um, Contact me on FB. I'd like to see you work, man. And uh, if you've got, like, an Instagram or anything like that, uh, just send me details, man. I, I, I do a variety of stuff. As you can see, I've got my airbrushes up there. I do, well, not as much now because I'm real busy with life, but, like, I, you know, I do, um, you know, like acrylic airbrushing illustration work, pen and ink, pencil. I do a little bit of digital art, um, but not so much and yeah my main background man is uh I, i'm an illustrator by trade but um i do scale modeling and whatnot and i do photo i'm more into my photography at the moment oh thank you man thank you mark i've got the old Sulaco ship but in the box bro you need to send me pictures of that man you need to send me pictures of that. I'd be quite keen to see that. I think Max Factory made the, um, what's it called? The power lifter. Max Factory made a model kit. I think, was it like last year or the year before? I think it might be two years ago. I can't remember. They, they released 
um, the power lifter model kit. It's cool. Love that you're hanging out with. Yeah, bro. Like th th this is a thing, Mark. Right. Um, so to give you a breakdown, I mean, it's good to chat to you because you're an artist yourself. Like since I was um, when I was at university studying illustration, um, there, were, uh, there was a few people doing a lot of digital stuff, um, which I respect and which I do a little bit myself. It is fun. But I'm I'm like old school, man. I'm all about pencil, pen, watercolor, acrylics, paints. All that. I'm proper OG, like yourself, probably. Um, <clears throat> and I know I go to a lot of exhibitions in Japan. I've seen a lot of like master stuff, like William Hogarth and um, this old school so pen and I'm a, I'm a big pen and inker, bro. Basically, I'm a big pen and ink. Um, so. Uh, for me, seeing digital art is beautiful, aesthetically, right? I love it. But knowing what work really goes in, into, like, pencil work or whatever, that's non, let's say non-digital, I appreciate a lot more. Horses for courses, everybody's into different stuff, right? So, um, but for me, I'm from like the old avant-garde, man. I'm an OG. And I just think some things done by hand with conventional methods, just for me personally, just looks way better because I just have more respect for the artist and I have more appreciation of and I know what work goes involved like you can't make any mistakes when you paint in acrylic you can't make errors right but with digital art you can just simply erase on illustrator clip studio function whatever you know what I'm saying man pen and ink is wonderful makes me think of wood prints yeah bro yeah etchings yeah exactly man um, how I got, well, how I really got into this, man, was like when I was at university, <clears throat> my paper, my end of your dissertation or thesis, you want to call it, um, was on political cartoonists of, I think it was like, was it 1800, 1900, I can't remember, up to the modern day. So like in England, you've got an artist called Ralph Steadman. I forgot who the American guy is. We have a magazine in England. I don't know if it's still around called Private Eye. It's basically political, um, uh, what they're called, satirists or p political cartoonists. And I don't know who the American guy is. There's a famous an American guy that does work. But generally in England, it's Ralph Steadman. He's like the biggest political satirist cartoonist so i did my thesis or paper on that yeah ron coop yeah that's probably him man yeah so I, I, my thesis was based on old etchings and old you know the history of like pen and ink etching and all that stuff so that's what really got me into this style of art which i've kept which i've developed my own style kind of thing right which for a lot of artists out there that um do art um it's probably the hardest thing to do is to actually have um your own quote unquote style <laughs> And a problem, the problem now with modern day art is that it's very difficult to, for artists to have their quote own style because now it's just so saturated with art, right? Because now we've got like social media and people are posting stuff up. Most of the digital stuff like character animation tends to look all the fucking same. So we, we we've come to this point in in creativity, I think that we've just hit this massive, like, huge wall where 
there's nothing really fucking new anymore. We've what boundaries that can we push? And I just think we've just hit that wall, man. And fair play. I mean, now people are trying to draw and do weird shit, you know what I mean? Um, he did that before. Oh, really? Exactly, Mark. Yeah, you got it, man. Yeah, like I said, I'm a big fan of Giga's work. I've got a, lo a few Giga books. Giga, man, fuck. Um, it's a sad shame that Fox treated Giga like shit. Uh, I'm not happy with that. As you know, maybe you, you, it sounds like you're a you're an alien hardcore fan, but like for me, without Giga, it's not aliens, man. If Giga was still alive now, can you imagine how fucking cool the fucking movies would be? It it would be insane, man. So when Giga died, it was just like it was just. I think aliens died with Giga. It died. It died. Uh, it's, you know, he, there's no way that you can replicate his work. The guy was the guy was a legend, man. And uh, hopefully, I was I was thinking about doing this anyway for a long time. I'm gonna go through uh, a fantasy artist from the UK called Patrick Woodruff, who's who's dead, who's one of my favourite. British fantasy artist, as you know, England has a lot of good fantasy artists like Brian Frood, um, obviously Patrick Woodruff. Brian Frood did uh, the concept art for Labyrinth. He's a fantasy artist. I've got his book called Fairies, which is a famous fucking book, man. It's so cool. Giga and Hollywood was a difficult mix, most certainly, man. Yeah. I mean, I actually didn't. I actually didn't know what the history was with Fox and Giga till I watched a few documentaries on YouTube. And then I found out what Fox did to him. And then I was like, fuck, man, that's ridiculous. Like, how they treated him, bro, it was just really bad. Really bad. Um, and then I kind of kind of left like a bit of a, a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I think, I think, I think uh, uh, if they make a new Aliens movie, are oh, you know Brian Fruit's work, man? Cool. Pressed fairies, Frode's book. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to dig it. Is it down there? Oh, wait a minute, Mark. Is that the book you're talking about? Because there is that Monty Python scene in there, man. I know what you're talking about. Is it three? It's like that huge German fish, right? Shit. I haven't I haven't got my headphones in, sorry. Wait a second. Is it in here? Oh, no, it's not. It, I've actually, I know what image you're talking about. It's actually in one of my airbrushing books of all books, actually. <clears throat> it's in a book. Um, I'll have to check that out, man. No, no, no. My library is quite extensive, man. <clears throat> um, going back to... Patrick Woodruff's work. Uh, it's a long story. I'll, I'll try and condense this down as much as possible. But a lot of people don't know about Patrick Woodruff. And he did some work for Rolling Stones. I can't remember. Some big famous band. I can't remember which band specifically. So my friend from England who was an illustrator, he was living in Japan. He introduced me to Patrick's work. And for fucking years, I couldn't remember the guy's name, Patrick's name. And then one day I stumbled across his work on the internet and I was like, oh, that's that guy. So anyway, I decided to 
find his books, which I got like maybe I think I got like how many books did I find? I got like four or five of his books. I didn't honestly think that I would find them in Japan on the auction websites, but I did, and I got them at a very reasonable price because they're out of print now. You obviously you can't buy them, and they're all, they're all in good condition. And I was just shocked because, you know, some Japanese people have obviously had these in their book collections and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I was like, wow. So I'm going to be doing a whole YouTube book review on Patrick's work. Um, but they're from, like, the 70s, 80s. Like, you know, like the hardcore British um, illustrators from that time frame. Uh, I have one of his books. Oh, right. Cool, man. No way. Awesome, man. I've got... Oh, what's his name? Oh, God. I have to go to my library. Wait a minute, Mark. <laughs> Where is it? Uh... Oh. Oh, shit, I can't remember, but it's Boris, what's his name? Boris v Villagio? Boris v Villagio? The guy that did Conan, Barbarian stuff? Boris? I can't, that's his name, if I can remember. Boris? Oh, it's there. What am I talking about? It's, it's looking at me right now, bro. I have so many fucking books. It's ridiculous. This book. Boris. Yeah, Vallejo. Which is obviously Vallejo is a paint company. You you must know this guy, bro. <coughs> Pardon me. It's a bit dry in because of the aircon. Yeah, man. I'm glad that I've met you, Mark, man. We could, uh, it's the first, I think it's the first time we've chatted, man, really. It's good to meet another illustrator and a p person that um, appreciates the old school stuff. Uh, indeed, sits next to my uh, Fossetti books. Cool, man. Yes, Boris Vallejo. Yeah, bro, man. That kind of stuff from that time frame is, is so fucking cool, man. And obviously, I mean, I have a lot of Japanese artist books as well. And I've got like an array of stuff, man. An array of stuff. Um, book collecting is another disease that I have, and I'm sure you have that same disease, Mark. Book collecting now. The, the weird thing is, though, like, you know, books now are getting so expensive, right? So, for any of you bookworms or book collectors out there, you need to snap stuff up because stuff is slowly uh, dissipating away. It's hard to find good prices on um, on books now because everything's getting so expensive. Like those old stuff. Like this is what gets me about books. Because I'm in Japan. I don't really I don't really know if the Japanese people, these sellers, knew like the value of these Patrick Woodruff books. Because like you said, even in the UK they're probably quite hard to get hold of. <clears throat> There's not probably not many on eBay or wherever. Because when I found my books, I was just shocked. I nearly had a heart attack, man, to be fair. <laughs> um, I have a signed... Oh, bro! You're into Sarayama, bro. Me and you need to talk, man. Bro, I have one of his books called Torture. 
I'm a big fan of uh, Suriyama's work. Obviously, you know, no, Kim Jong uh, Gong, he died. You need to check out an artist called uh, Tarada. Tarada. Again, if you're watching my YouTube, Mark, I'm actually going to be doing a lot of book reviews, illustrator, Japanese illustrator and um, book reviews. You need to check out another guy called Rocking Jellybean. He's, he's an artist that's around now. He does some fucking mad shit. He's into his, like, fucking, like, 70s horror stuff. How did you get a Surayama, a Surayama book, man? That's crazy, man. So my son has his... Um, he has a Triceratops. Surayama t-shirt. So... They had like a whole Soriyama collaboration with a company called Uniglo in, in Japan. Uniglo is like a retail fashion shop and they do like really cool t-shirts. And now and again, Soriyama does like a collaboration. And you probably know the dinosaur stuff, right? Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get a t-shirt in my fucking size. Oh, you got it on. Oh, you know Jelly Bean, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's got he's got an exhibition on now called Killer Condom. If you check his Instagram, bro, Rocking Jelly Bean. It's cool as fuck, man. That's awesome, man. I can't believe you uh, were into the same kind of stuff. Man. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna start doing these fish. These fish scales on here yet because I need to buy a new pen. Because I want that to be like jet black. How much did you pay for that? If you don't mind me asking, Mark. So my co-worker uh, on my workplace, he's Japanese. He's got um, he's got a lot of um, special limited. Um, he's a big Rocking Jelly Bean fan, by the way, and he's got loads of like limited prints. Like to put it this way, my friend, he's one of those guys that will queue up for hours to get his work. But like Rocking Jelly Bean's work is so fucking expensive. <laughs> um. And to get one of his limited prints, yeah, you have to, like, fucking wait in line and shit like that. But he's got, my friend's got some, he's met him. He's got some signed prints and whatnot. But my, my friend at work's really into him, man. And most likely that, uh, I've actually, I've actually been to the Rocking Jelly Bean shop, which is in Harajuku, Tokyo. If you're ever in Japan, man, I'll take you there, man. The shop is all jelly bean stuff. And uh yeah, it's just really amazing. But again, it's super expensive. You need to you need to be loaded with cash to go there. Uh thing is about wow, yeah, that's a good price. That's like uh, Ichiman Nisen Ichiman, yeah. Framed. Wish it was a print, but it's a poster. It's still nice. Oh cool man. Yeah, I know Soriyama has been doing some exhibition work outside of Japan, but his fucking studio is really weird because I think he lives in a mansion, but his studio space is really cool, man. I love his studio space. Who's pinging me now? Who's fucking mailing me? Oh, it's Mark. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. My keyboard's fallen. Two seconds. I was, thanks, Mark. 
if you want to chill out, man, you want to hang out. It's probably like getting late in well, in America, eight, maybe nine p.m. Nine p.m. If you got things to do, man, I'm not holding you here. But yeah, it's definitely. Uh, see, this is what I'm saying, man. It's so it's so interesting that you know there's people that um on my Facebook and, and YouTube that I don't really talk because I haven't been doing live YouTube sessions for for quite some time now, and it's it's been a it's been a pleasure meeting you, Mark, man. Really is. It's a breath of a breath of fr fresh air to meet uh, another illustrator artist that uh, we're on the same page, so to speak. We, we I, mean, I, I could I could talk to you for hours, man, <laughs> about art. Uh, talk to you for hours. Sorry, how old are you, Mark? If you don't mind me asking, be honest. Because <laughs> I actually had a guy yesterday that was watching me on Facebook, and I, I didn't, I couldn't believe it. It's an American guy, and uh, yeah, he told me he was sixty-three, and I'm like, holy shit, man! I thought you like, I thought this guy was in his forties, and I've known him for quite a while on on uh, socials. Uh, and I was like, wow, I didn't know you were that old. And he was telling me shit like, 63, bro. Holy crap, bro. You don't know the guy that I was chatting to last night. Most def I Who was I chatting to last night on uh, FB Live? Can't remember. 63 is the new 40s. Yeah, man. You're the same age as the other guy. I can't, who was I talking to last night on Facebook? Can't remember. Well, it wasn't you, was it? Surely not, bro, man. It's crazy. Because we we were, yeah, not you. Ah, okay. This is this is insane. Because my friend, we were um, we were talking about like he witnessed, like oh, he he remembered when JFK got shot. And he remembered like the first moon landing and stuff like that, which is incredible, man. Like, and we were talking about like nostalgia stuff from back then. Um, so I presume uh, you were born. Your your time frame was like or your era was like the seventies, right? Uh, we were reminiscing and stuff like that. And we were just talking about how life was a lot easier back then. Um, as much as I love the internet, I kind of wish we didn't have it anymore. I think we wouldn't be communicating right now without it, obviously. But I'm saying, like, yeah, I don't know. I kind of miss going to libraries, getting books. Um, finding information that way. It's sad that, uh, like, who goes to libraries anymore? How are the government funding libraries? I mean, libraries will always be here, obviously, because uh, they have other stuff that you can do at a library. But I'm saying, do people rent books still, man? I don't. My wife does for kids' books and stuff like that. But it's crazy, man. Will, will libraries be around in the next 10 years? My art school had no computers. Rip, bro. <laughs> oh, you were eight when you saw the moon landing. Wow. What an age to see that, man. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, that's interesting because my, my university, where I studied illustration, which is in the north of England, a place called Hull, our university was one of the only one of, of of a few universities, may I add, that had an original printing press. Uh, my old college used to have one, uh, and recently, because I really like etching, right? So anyway, to cut a long story short, a co-worker of mine, his wife, does etching 
studio classes in the south of Japan, and we're hoping to travel down there to do some etching because I haven't. I love etching. Oh, did you get, bro? Of course, I got to use the press, right? So, like our our press that we had at my university was huge. Like I'm talking huge. So when we were studying uh, etching. I was just blown away by the etching uh, methods and how etching was made. And then obviously, like with Patrick Woodroff, he does etching and I just love etching. So I love, I like, you know, I know linear graph stuff is like Escher stuff uh, and, and print. But yeah, bro, for people out there that are watching this video, if you've never done etching in your life, you're missing out, man. Etching is an incredible thing, and it's incredible skill, and it's incredible fun. Um, I know Woodroff did a, a piece. It's of this guy in like, like medieval times. This knight on a horse, and in the background, he's got like these weird, like medieval, like gothic buildings in the back. It's. I think it's one of his best pieces that he's done. And he did that on uh, etching. And then, like, I think he he used some, like, inks on top of it. Because it's kind of like, um, it's got a bluish tint to it. So I think he overlaid paint on top. It's so beautiful, man. It's just amazing. Again, a lot of young people don't know what, what etching is. <laughs> it's only old, old farts like me and Mark that really understand what etching is. But etching is so cool. And I've got one of... Um, we're going to have to have a private chat, Mark, one day. I've actually got a book, and I'll I'll send you details after I finish this feed, because I have to start work in about 30 minutes. Patrick Woodroff did a book, um, which is actually about his whole fucking studio. Sorry for swearing, Mark. And it's an amazing book because it's not really his artwork. It's about his whole methodology, his materials, his studio. And he, he talks about how he got like this old press. Now, he lived in a place called Falmouth, which is down in Cornwall, where many famous watercolor artists and artists in general uh, resided because of the landscape. It's a beautiful place to paint, like the beach, and and it's got big, you know, that's where Stonehenge is. A lot, of, that's where most of like the fantasy stuff comes from. Um, Cornwall, Devon, and he lived, I think, in Falmouth. Anyway, he got this old printing press which weighed like crazy. I don't know, just just crazy. And um, he lived like at top of this apartment. And he talks about how he had to carry this shit up, <laughs> up the stairs. And like, bro, like, you know, these houses are really old. Like, he was worried about uh, this printing press falling. It wasn't a huge press, but it was enough to do, like, you know, like this size. This is like A0, I think A0. You're going to put color on your... Uh, you know, I just keep my stuff black and white, Mark. Um, I do have, actually, I don't know if you... Have you seen my studio, bro? I don't know, because this is like the first time we've kind of met, man. Wait a minute, let me take... Have I got power? I should have power if I take that off. Two bars. I need to get a new webcam anyway at one point, but to give you a little... Sorry, the monitor is, is taking space up here. But this is basically... I don't know if you see my YouTube video, but the lighting's bad, but this is my studio. So... I have like the full Windsor and Newton inks, which I got very, very cheap. And I'm hoping one day to actually use them. Um, you can't really, sorry about the light, but yeah, this is my, my whole studio here. Give me a second. Can I, yeah. It's my art studio, man. 
you might have seen it previously on um, my videos, but yeah. Anyway, uh, I want to use those inks on a pen and ink work. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to use airbrush either. To, like basically, like I like to use uh, watercolor mainly. Uh, I like inks. For airbrushing illustration work, I use acrylics and a bit of gouache. Thanks, man. And uh, if you know anything about airbrushes as well. Um, I like to use very light backgrounds as a background with airbrush to give a soft finish and then on top build up stuff, you know. But yeah, you know, I'll have to uh, check out your work after I've uh, done the feed, Mark. It's a bit of a coincidence. It's a bit of a coincidence that we've met because, uh, like I said, uh, you've probably been on my Facebook for quite some time and probably we've never had a, a chat about art and whatnot. Yeah, the inks are like 100% opacity man uh, but the good thing with the ink so you can like you know water it down so to speak if you want different strengths but i'll tell you something now mark and i, I know you will agree with me the price of artist materials now is insane i mean it was always windsor and newton watercolors have always been expensive not the studio range i'm talking about the the legit range and this is going to blow your mind. Because, I, like I said, I, I used to be a toy seller. I have, over here, which I've never used yet, I have the Series 7. Where's the black? I have the Series 7 Windsor & Newton Sable brushes, which... Oh, shit. I don't know where the lid's gone for that. It's somewhere in there, but yeah, man. I have yet to use. So this winter time, we shall be cracking these out. A lot of modelers use fucking Series 7 brushes, and I don't really understand it. Because acrylics are the worst things to use, I think. For samples and i'm not saying you can't use them i'm just saying i don't personally want to use expensive sable brushes for acrylics because acrylics man <laughs> it's just horrible stuff yeah i actually got them very cheap because like the model shop or the supplies that i go to i get discount i get trade rates but yeah I, as soon as i saw them i had to pick those up um but yeah what um artist equipment now is ridiculous like acrylic paint is so expensive i don't know why it's so expensive but yeah it's just crazy man i think in america don't you have a shop called uh barnes and barnes and uh noble is that the main shop where you buy your art supplies I'm looking love to drink it in <laughs> I get them at Texas Art Supply oh okay Japan is a very dangerous country because out here, our art shops are very good. Like, the best. I'll have to send you pictures, Mark. I've got some pictures on my Facebook. I'll DM you it, but... Man, it's crazy. Especially, like, for pens and stuff like that. It's insane. I think 
every time I go to like a, an art shop or like a shop that sells a lot of artist uh, equipment, uh, my wallet starts twitching, man. You know. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very dangerous place. And if you're not an artist, you probably won't get it. What you probably won't get what me and Mark are trying to convey out there. <laughs> yeah, art shops out here, bro, are just really bad. And I mean man. Cause art is still a big thing in Japan. Ever run airbrush paint through technical pens? No, I haven't, man. Yeah. Oh, what they called? I have, I have those inks, bro. Those pre-made inks. I know what you're talking about. What they're called? Oh, uh, they're in. A, I have some in a box somewhere. Are they in here? Just wait a minute. Oh, I, I can't find them, but I think the name, uh, is it called, they're called Dr. Martins or something? They're inks, but like, you can run them, for, uh, is it Martins? I'm sure it's Dr. Martins, man. I'm sure it is. Let me check. Not the shoes. I, oh, I can't remember the name. Yeah. Dr. P.H. Martins, bro. Which are basically like, um, you can, oh, they're not, they're not that expensive, man. 5,000 yen, that's 50 bucks. There's a Barnes & Noble near me too. Radiographs, got to keep them real clean. Yeah, that's one thing that um, I'm very good at with airbrushes. Like this, let me get the Ferrari out. I haven't used this yet. I don't use it because it's so fucking beautiful. It's like buying a fucking Ferrari or some shit, you know. I got the high end or uh, one of the high end lines in the Iwata airbrush, the CMs. Like I've people that have problems with airbrushes are weird, man. Like <laughs> my airbrush is blocked; it doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? Oh, because I don't fucking clean it. I'm like, there are a lot of people out there that just abuse their equipment because they never fucking fully clean out their air guns, and it happens a lot. And if you're using acrylic paint, which is the worst, of course, man. You look after your tools, the tools look after you, right? I do have one small issue with one of my eye waters, but that's not because of me damaging stuff. It needs a new um, internal ring. Uh, it's losing pressure, which I can get a replacement part, but that's not me damaging it. That's just deterioration over time. But these, these cust, um, these CMs, because it's the the highest. Sorry, the lighting is terrible. Um, the these are the highest line in their airbrush range. They come in a fucking metal box, bro. It's beautiful, man. Comes in a metal box. The 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 range is below this. Like the HPs, the um, the eclipses and stuff like that, all come in plastic boxes. So when you buy this, it is just like buying a like a Ferrari. Man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Comes in a metal container. This is what I found cool. Every airbrush comes with the test sheet for Q. Uh, 
QC, quality control. It's even marked with a number, I think. 122 two on there. So whoever tested this, that's the test sheet, the original test sheet, which is amazing. Obviously, it comes with instructions. This is the CMB. I have not used this yet. This is just amazing. I, I know you Americans like Badger, and I know I've actually spoken to that guy at Badger, man. I forgot what's his name. I forgot his name. I haven't spoken to him for, for a long while. Because Badger's based out in Chicago, right? I forgot his name now. Don't get me wrong. I like Badger. It's all right. But I just prefer Japanese brushes, man. I've got a Patriot Badger here. Um, Badger brushes are all right, but they just don't have like the final quality finish that I like from a Japanese air gun, you know. And you've got Harder and Steinbach from Germany. That's the Infinity. That's a beautiful gun. But I don't really use this one so much because it's so it's a pain in the ass to clean. Real pain in the ass to clean. I don't like that one too much. Ah, you're a Pash guy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The VLs. Is it the VL? Call it the VL. Bro, that's how I started. My, my dad, when I was young, gave me my first airbrush. It was a single action. Pash, still have it somewhere. Is it in here? Ah, it's in here. Here it is, Mark. That's how I started airbrushing, man. Was this very brush? But two, Pash F. It was actually this one, but it kind of broke because it was old. My dad got it like back in the fucking fifties, whatever. But yeah, still have it. Family heirloom. And to be honest, I love single action airbrushes. I think they're amazing for a beginner and for some things like you want to do big, big flushes of stuff. Yeah, amazing. Nothing wrong with a single action airbrush. People get drawn into du dual action, right? The only thing that I didn't like about these is the gravity feed. Because sometimes that shit would fall out and fucking destroy my artwork. Because they have like a. Um, the cup, the cup used to be, you know, I actually, my dad gave me his fucking aerograph. If you know what aerographs are, I have an aerograph as well. That's one aerograph. It's aerograph. I think aerograph were from UK, Britain. And I have an older aerograph. Where did I put the old one? It's somewhere. Behind this stand are all my airbrushes. And I have a very old vintage aerograph. Yeah, me too, bro. Same thing, same thing. Same thing, man. Uh, I, I don't know what it is now with modelers, but like for illustration work, I get the sense of like having dual. For model work, I don't know why people go crazy on dual actions because I think dual actions for that is not needed. You don't need it, man. All you need to do on a single one is just control the airflow, whatever. It's very easy to use, very easy to clean, it's very quick. Once you start using dual action stuff on model kits and stuff, uh, yeah, I just think it's it's something that I it's my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but I think it's over the top. I think it's overrated to have dual action on um, on um, using like um, on model kits. Just my own thing. But when I do modeling, I have multiple lines. So I have I actually have three compressors here. 
uh, two by Iwata and one by uh, Mr. Hobby. But I have multiple multiple airlines, so I can have like four airbrushes on, so I can just have four guns ready to, to, to go. So I use one specifically just for glossing, for top coating, one for doing base and whatever. They're all separated, but I just have the luxury of having multiple lines. Yeah, it, of course, man. I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to like say, don't buy a dual action airbrush um, for model kits. By all means, do because I I use them as well. But I'm saying like, <clears throat> people that don't have a lot of money. Uh, don't feel pressured in that. Oh, you have to have like a, a dual action. It's not needed, really. I don't think. Um, and uh, some people get really like arrogant about airbrush work. But these are modelers, man. The real work, uh, actual airbrushes that do freestyle stuff. That shit is mind blowing. It's not model kits. It's free, free illustration. Those guys, the guys that even in Florida, who do those T-shirts all day. Those guys are amazing. Like I, I, I suck at that. That is skill, man. To do lettering, it's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like this one here, Mark. Oop. This is one of my beast ones. If you've got big work, like if you've got big kits and stuff like that, if you want a big, psh, big floor, big range, TR2s. These TR2s, when I was in a lot of the modeling groups, which I'm not in anymore because I just, I don't like Facebook modeling groups anymore. Um, a lot of people that had uh, problems with uh, what's the word when your hand sees it. What's it called? Beginning with A. I forgot. I forgot. Alphritis. That's the one. A lot of like the old guys, like you know, like the old veterans and stuff that were doing military stuff like that. A lot of the older guys like to use these because of, of the handle. So for all you old folks out there, yeah, the, the trigger action ones are, are pretty cool. Ooh, ooh la la. I might have to start using this in about 10 years. Um, back to Giga. Okay, man, I've got like maybe five, 10 minutes, Mark, and then I'm going to head out. We'll we'll leave this amazing feed on uh, Mark's last topic, Giga. Let's let's do it, man. Still waiting for, for Mark to uh, chat. Um, hello to the second viewer. I can't believe why I only have these two like people. Like This is such an interesting topic to talk about. I suppose everyone's busy, though. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, freehand airbrush artists are aliens. <laughs> they are. I've seen stuff on YouTube. I've seen, like, I, I'm in a, I follow a few guys that do live sessions and stuff. That freehand stuff is absolutely mind-blowing. Especially, like, the guys that do all the uh, custom artwork on Harley Davidson's guitar, um, 
guitars, hoods, helmets. Those guys are just phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. The guys that do all the that that Harley Davidson artwork stuff is mind blowing. I watched a guy do like a whole Batman Joker thing on this guy's on this guy's tank. Just mind blowing, man. Just mind blowing. Watching it like week by week to the final thing when he top glossed it all and stuff like that. And then he compounded it, polished it all out, bro. It's just stunning. <laughs> just just craftsmanship. It's like the people that do the stuff on like the old um Chevys and stuff like that, cars as well. Yeah, bro, but like all that's gonna be gone, man. No, I wouldn't say gone, but like Like people that do sign writing, sign writing's gone, right? Who does fucking sign writing anymore? Everybody wants cheap, crappy fucking acrylic shit and vinyl stickers for their shop signs. You don't, where do you see? My dad used to do. My dad used to be a sign writer, man. Back in the day, he gave me a lot of his old lining brushes that he used. My dad did work on trains. He did. Proper, like, when, when we lived in Africa, he, well, he, yeah, he, he did loads of stuff. Sign writers, man. Dying breed, Mark. Dying breed. But I'm pretty sure, and I have seen videos on Instagram, there are still people that do that, that line work with oils and stuff. There are people that still do it. But... Uh, yeah, man. You know what we're talking about. I see, like, me and Mark are definitely on the same page here with a lot of things. I mean, I'm 43. Mark's 63. He's 20 years older than me. So I'm at, like, that time period of, like, the appreciation of all this, like, old method stuff. So I think maybe my generation is kind of like the cutoff point of old school techniques. You know, people just want, yeah, I I can't really comment on it because it's not fair me comparing stuff from now and then because it's all different now. You know, to, to pay a real sign writer money to do a sign would cost a lot of money. Now you can just go to a graphics company, they'll print up some vinyl stickers or whatever, put it on Perspex or whatever. And it's like we're more than half the cost. Exactly, man. Yeah, I mean, like my kids is. I have to inspire and educate my kids on um, on techniques and stuff that I grew up with, and uh, it's it's about people, you know, educating the youth and showing them things. Who knows? There could be a resurgence. There, there could be really good fucking money in being a sign writer, doing traditional stuff. But like, if there's like a business, like a coffee shop, imagine like a coffee shop, right, or a craft bar, beer bar, and they want like an old retro, you know, sign done, you know. So I'm sure there's still a market for it somewhere. I mean, I did see a guy on uh, Instagram. I think he was from Europe, and he was doing some line work. Just amazing shit, man. And people that do stuff on cars as well, like the custom car paint, doing line work. I think it was like an, a Mexican thing that this guy was doing. But it's so crazy because they use, obviously, a long... Um, like a long brush, right? And how they do it, man, it's just one fucking movement, bro. But it's like perfection. It's this it's crazy to watch. If you don't understand it, man. <laughs> right, guys. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you on my live feed. Because generally I don't get a lot of people watching me. I don't really do these things, but it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today, Mark. And I think there's another viewer watching me as well. 
Um, I hope we can continue this conversation further. Uh, I hope to be doing more live sessions in the morning. Uh, for my YouTube, I will be going through all my um, art books. Uh, Mark, please, uh, I'll try and tag you. Got lots of books to, to talk about. And uh, I wish you all a very nice evening, day, morning, wherever you are in the world. And uh, yeah, thank you, Mark. And thank you, all the TMD crew. And uh, have an amazing day, people. One love. Take care. Darren, bye-bye, bye-bye.